A band of cunning orc commandos have bafflingly found themselves in possession of a highly significant Imperial artifact. Without hesitation, the talons of the Emperor set out to take back what is theirs and destroy their foolish opponents. Can the unstoppable force of the Adeptus Custodes reclaim this stolen relic? Or will the Emperor's finest get crumped? Find out here on Mountainside Tabletop. Hey folks, welcome to Mountainside Tabletop, back with another Kill Team Battle Report on Beta Decima once again. Beta! <laughs> so, yes, I am playing a Compendium team. Uh, I've been playing the Custodes a little bit lately, and I've really been enjoying them. I've taken them to a couple tournaments, taken them to a couple game nights, and I've had a lot of success. I've had a bunch of games against a bunch of different bespoke teams, and I really think they match up. This team has some play. Obviously, they only have four or maximum seven models, which is pretty low, um, but they're good. They got stuff going on, and I think they are uh, not to be underestimated. So for my loadout today, I've got two of the big guys and five of the Sisters of Silence. Uh, four of them have swords and one of them has a flamer. Admittedly, I did this loadout because that's what I had built, because I originally built them for Into the Dark. I would like to have some bolt guns, but I don't have them and I'm gonna make do with what I've got. And I do think that they will be okay with that as long as they can get up and stay in cover. So I decided to give my custodians the spears instead of the storm shields. Because I didn't have the bolters, I wanted to have some long range firepower and I'm not too worried about Brad's ability to use uh, AP weapons, so I didn't need the invuln save. We'll see, this decision uh, was a little bit more iffy, but you know, I think there's, there's method here. For equipment, I've given the two custodians the Misericordia, uh, mortal wounds in combat thing. Three of the sisters have the face mask, which gives them a bit of a just a scratch thing. Yeah, to be honest, the sisters don't really pose much threat to me at all. Like, yeah, they're good at fighting, but I'm also not bad at fighting. Yeah. And yeah, if they fight first, they might get some kills off, but you know, I can just try and kill them by ranged attacks before I even get there if I can. And I, I have other ways to deal with them. I'm not too worried about them. Uh, the two actual custodies though, they pose a bit more of a threat, right? They have a lot of wounds, 18 and 19 wounds a piece, and built into their kit, they can't be injured. So if I'm putting damage on them, I've got to really commit because even if I take them down to one HP gang, it basically makes no difference until yeah. they're dead. So I really like either got to commit or just ignore them and just kill the sisters, which is probably what I'm going to do, but we'll see. Other than that, um, you know, flamers are trash. Yeah. And I think uh, you're going to be in trouble if we roll loot here. Yeah. <laughs> Back by popular demand. They've already got one dub on the channel. Can they get a second dub? Hopefully, yes. Uh, the patrons voted and they let me play Commandos today, which I'm very happy about. Uh, I love this team and I like my speed painted paint job that I did. Uh, there's a link to the video that we did of that up there. Uh, yeah, I'm really happy to play these guys again. This time I'm not taking the Flamer. I think the Flamer's kind of trash, but I am taking the Breacher Boy. I think he has some play. Honestly, if I had more boys, I might just take a regular boy instead of the Breacher Boy, but I don't have three boys, so I'm sticking with two boys and the Breacher Boy. <laughs> How many times can you say yeah. boy? For equipment, I've given the Breacher Boy a dynamite. I think like his only purpose is to walk through terrain and blow up some dynamite. Uh, and then everybody else, except the boys and the guys that can't have equipment, of course, have climbing ropes. Uh, I'm hoping that'll just help all my specialists get up on these gantries faster and get me the objective so I can outscore Vic and then just kill his sisters and he can't score with two bodies. So we'll see. Yeah, uh, my biggest fear here, I guess if I had to pick something, is the Rocket Boy. Yeah. Um, you know, it's your main access to repeatable AP, which, you know, is how you get rid of custodies. But really, my biggest fear here is just a scratch. Yeah. Uh, my win condition here is getting my sisters into melee and doing some damage. But it's just so hard to kill these things <laughs> yeah. when you can do that. I mean, it's, it's so powerful. Honestly, like, I don't 
complain a lot about what needs to be buffed or nerfed in this game, but this ploy needs to be one plus CP, so it costs more every time because it, it's just it's too much. It's I think it's I think it's the perfect amount. Yeah, I'm sure you do. <laughs> I think Domino Field is the perfect amount yeah, of okay. one CP. Anyway, yeah, that's my biggest fear. I'll just have to try to bait it out early in each turning point, I guess. But beta. Uh, for today's game, we're back on Beta Decima. We've got the Engineerium deployment, and the mission is loot. Ah. <laughs> we roll off for attacker defender, Vic wins, and he decides to be the defender. So he picks the bottom edge of the board to be his edge, and we set up our barricades and our operatives. During operative setup, I do spend 1 CP to forward deploy my rocket boy. Uh, Sneaky Git is good here, and I think this is a good play to just get ahead on points. In the scouting step, we both pick recon dash, so we make our dashes, and I'm gonna take initiative for myself. Usually I don't do this, but I have a sneaky turn one play here that I really wanna do, and uh, I need initiative for it, so I'm taking it. In the top of turning point one, Brad's got initiative, and neither of us do any strategic ploys or reveal any tack ops, so we just get straight into the action. All right, last game with these guys, you saw the Grot be the secret MVP at the very end of the game. But in this game, my Grot's gonna be the overt obvious MVP. First activation, I'm gonna grapple up and steal Vic's home objective. I'm gonna loot that. You can't loot at turning point one. I'm already winning, GG. Yeah, whatever. I'm not worried about the Grot. You're not worried about it? No, I'm not worried about any of it. All right. So with my first activation, I'm gonna activate this sister, loot the objective, and then move over to contest this one, just so that Brad can't easily loot it and run away. I'm gonna go with my Daka boy now. I'm gonna get onto that same objective. Spicily, I'm in an engage order, but I had to use my Daka boy here because the boy next to him didn't have a climbing rope, so it had to be the Daka boy. Unfortunately, I can't move first and then Daka dash to get a shoot in because I need to do the dash first. Otherwise, I can't get over the gap in between platforms. So kind of unfortunate, I won't get a shot off even though I have an engage order, but at least I'm contesting this point. I think uh, I got to do this. All right, well, this sister's just going to move on to this recently vacated objective. Okay, my rocket boy is going to loot this point and then climb up on the furnace. All right, I'm gonna activate one of the custodians, uh, move and take a shoot at the Daka boy. Get a total crap roll here, unfortunately, and only three damage goes through. Okay, my Slasha is gonna move up and tap this objective. My sister with a flamer is gonna move up and start threatening this grot a little bit. All right, my knob is gonna activate now. First things first, I'll use get it done on the Breacher boy to give him an extra APL. And then the knob himself is just going to move up next to the sniper. My sister will move and dash up this gantry and hide behind this barricade. And my squig is just going to move and pass. I'm going to activate my leader now, move up onto the gantry to shoot the Daka boy. Get a slightly better roll this time. It activates P1 luckily, but of course Brad is going to use just a scratch to negate the crit and only take three damage, bringing him down to four HP. Uh, then I'm just going to dash back down into hiding. My Breacher Boy now, his APL has been buffed, so I'm going to move, dash, and then tap my home objective here. I'm going to activate this last sister over here to move up and join the other one. Okay, my comms guy is going to move up to near where the Breacher Boy is, and then buff him for next turn. Alright, well I do have an Overwatch attack here, so I'm going to take it on the Daka Boy. Get a crit, so P1 is engaged, and Brad saves it all! They're so hard to kill. Yeah. All right, my sniper's gonna go now. I'm just gonna move and dash over to this middle objective. And then both my regular boys are just gonna move up on top of some of these gantries. But at the end of turning point one, I've got four victory points from primaries, and Victor just has one. Yeah, you know what, I'm honestly not too worried about the score at this point. My plan is just to outlast you and score a bunch of points once I clean up all the orc corpses, but uh, I really wish I had killed that Daka boy. He's gonna take a good shot. That was a very disappointing couple of whiffs, but uh, you know, I think once I start removing these orcs from the board, I've got a lot of play and uh, you know, half the board is basically empty already. So I think I'm okay. Love to have more than one point, but I think I'm okay.
All right, turning point two, we roll off for initiative and Victor wins. For strat ploys, Vic plays Aegis of the Emperor and then I play Daka Daka. Then Vic plays Peerless Warriors and also plays Creeping Dread, burning all your CP Yeah, here. I'm all in. All in all on right. TP too. <laughs> for Tac Ops, we both reveal Eliminate Guards. Uh, Vic targets my Breacher Boy and I target one of his sisters. Then I reveal Route and we get into the action. For the first activation, I'm intent on burning all my CP, I guess, so I'm going to spend one more on Talons to double activate here. First, this sister is going to charge the sniper. Then my leader is going to climb up the gantry and shoot Brad's comms boy. I, another pretty bad one here, only 6 damage through. Then, thanks to Peerless Warriors, I can shoot again. Get a better roll here, but of course Brad will spend his CP on just a scratch and stay alive with 1 HP. This number of the 1 HP gang is brought to you by Chuck Pepper. Thanks Chuck Pepper. Then my sister that activated earlier is going to fight this sniper. Uh, sniper's hitting on one worse thanks to Creeping Dread, but again, a uh, pretty disappointing attack here. The sister goes down to 5 wounds, and the sniper also stays alive with 1 damn HP. This member of the 1 HP gang is brought to you by Kid Carlemagne. Thanks, Kid Carlemagne. All right, I'm gonna go with my Breacha Boy now. I'm gonna move up and then chuck this dynamite at one of Vic's sisters, my Eliminate Guards target. Yeah, the dynamite has unwieldy, but my APL was buffed last turn, so I got three APL, baby. I can do this. Nice. Great roll. I'm gonna use my last CP here for a reroll just to be safe. Nice, paid off, and I get the kill. All right, uh, I'm going to ignore this side of the map because it's pissing me off, and this sister's going to charge and fight the rocket boy. Get another really wonderful attack here, and Brad spikes yet again, and uh, so after everything, the rocket boy's down to 4 HP, and I've used my sister's uh, just a scratch face mask thing. Okay, well, this grot is actually maybe, like, OP a bit on beta decima. <laughs> yeah. This is insane. Uh, I'm gonna grapple from the complete opposite side of the map over to this point and then loot it. Uh, this guy's just a loot machine. So I'm gonna just get my flamers activation out of the way. Uh, she'll loot this objective and then take a shot at the breacha. Bringing him down to 2 HP. Okay, my Daka boy's gonna go now before he dies. I'm gonna dack a dash. I'll start by shooting this sister. Nothing goes through. Then I'll dash away and then end my activation with a move over to this other gantry. I pass my jump test and I'm chilling here where I can just camp this point and loot over and over and over again until the game's over. Easy. Yeah. Uh, okay. So this sister is gonna loot this objective and then charge the rocket boy just to keep him tied up for now. I do not care. <laughs> <laughs> All right, my comms boy now is gonna move, dash, and then loot this point for free, baby. Hey! All right, well, I'm gonna activate my last custodian here. I'm gonna move and take a shot at the breacher, bringing him down, uh, which does score me a point for eliminate guards. And I'm gonna dash over to the objective. Okay, my slasher boy's gonna go. I got a really easy charge here, so I charge up and then I'm gonna fight this sister. I'm down to 4 HP left, but I get the kill. And then you know what? Vic's out of guys, out of activation, so I'm gonna go with this boy, and he's gonna charge as well. I'll fight the other sister up here. I'm also down to 4 HP left, but I also get the kill. Uh, next my knob's gonna go. I'll buff the boy next to him, then jump across this gantry, and hide behind this objective. It's already been looted, but I'm gonna loot it next turn, so I'm chilling. Still no overwatch for Vic, so my sniper's gonna go. I'm gonna fall back behind this barricade. Yeah, so, all right, I'll finally use one of my overwatches here, take a shot at the sniper, and finally bring him down. Okay. Uh, I got a boy over here. I'm gonna charge this sister. Unfortunately, I fail my second jump test, so I'm standing in the middle of nowhere, but at least I can shoot. So I will shoot you, and I get no damage through. Now my squig's just gonna nudge over a little bit. And then my rocket boy is going to take a shot against uh, against your leader, Vic. Pretty good roll. I get 8 damage through, so you have 11 left. Basically does nothing because you can't be injured, but at least I'm chipping away. Maybe I'll kill you eventually. Alright, well now I'm going to spend my last CP uh, to take a overwatch attack at the end of the firefight phase to shoot the rocket boy. 
another pretty terrible attack here, and uh, he's still alive. All right, so at the end of turning point two, I've got seven points, Vic's got four. I'm feeling pretty good, but you still have some plays to be made. You still have two of your Chonky Boys left. Yeah, I mean, they really excel in combat, but I just haven't been able to get them near anyone. Um, Beta Decima, it's so hard without climbing equipment to get engaged, but uh, you know, we both scored the same amount that last turning point, so if I can do the same here and then outscore you in four, I'm uh, feeling okay. You know what else makes me feel okay, Victor? Shout out to my 1HP gangsters and my mountaineers. <laughs> and the mountain, what? What was the other one? What was the other one? <laughs> The like, mountain, the mountain giraffes. Yeah, I think those. The it. mountain sheepdogs. Yeah. Goats, goats. Bit of a jump scare. <laughs> <laughs> in turning point three, Vic wins initiative, but neither of us play anything in the strategic phase. For tac ops, Vic plays executioner. His executioner is going to be his leader, and his target is going to be my comms boy. Then for Eliminate Guards, he targets my comms boy as well, and I target one of his sisters. With the first activation, no surprise here, my leader's gonna activate, dash, and then take a shot at the comms boy. I'm gonna spend my last CP here to reroll just to confirm that I get this kill. I'm gonna score one VP for Eliminate Guards and another one for Executioner. Then I'm just gonna move and jump off this gantry. Okay, my rocket boy's gonna go now. Uh, I got a nice shot on one of Vic's sisters, so I'm gonna take it. I easily get the kill, that scores me eliminate guards, and then I'll just jump down. Well, this custodian is gonna climb the gantry, uh, shoot this boy, get a good attack here finally, uh, activate P1, but Brad's gonna spend a CP on just a scratch and stay alive. Well, since I'm alive, I may as well jump over this gantry. I pass my jump test, and then I'll just tap this point for a point. So my sister with the flamer is going to activate here, tap her objective, and then move up to get closer to the other one. Hey, more grot cheese. Uh, I'm going to grapple all the way to the back objective, my old home objective, and tap it. May as well score those points. Yeah. Also, grot cheese sounds like it'd be really tasty. <laughs> Ah, uh, yeah, that's too bad. So my custodian is going to take an overwatch attack on the rocket boy and do nothing. I got a few operatives left to go. Uh, all I'm going to do here is move around. I'll loot three more objectives and hide the rest of my guys. And uh, it's looking pretty good for your commando boys. Yeah, that, uh, that was pretty rough. Can't believe that rocket boy is still alive. And my sister going down before being able to loot that point really feels like a nail in my coffin. So for the top of turning point four, we roll for initiative. Brad won, and with the first activation, tap this point with the grot, which means there's absolutely no way I could come back, even if I had unlimited movement, fly, and had tabled him. Yeah. Uh, I just got guys hidden behind objectives on the complete opposite side of the board. I can just tap them for points easily. Yeah. Uh, just ran out of bodies. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, like, obviously that felt like a pretty one-sided game, but there were a few points where things could have gone differently and I could have evened out the uh, the activations a little bit more, and I think I would have had a chance. Yeah, if you had killed my Daka boy sooner, or if you had managed to kill my Rocket boy, it would have been a huge game changer. Totally. And I mean, once again, I've overlooked what that Grot can do, but I don't even know how I really could have stopped him here. He was just like spider manning all over the map, tapping yeah. points, and there's nothing I could do about could it. Could you have charged him turning point one? No. No? Not without being engaged, like yeah. setting up differently. Also, he has super conceal, so right. he's hiding behind those objectives that are terrain. Even if he got up on a vantage point and tried to shoot me, now he can't do it. Yeah, really tough to deal with on Beta Decima, uh, especially with a, you know, small team anyway but yeah a good game i still do believe in this team and i'd like to bring him back have another matchup sometime yeah we could do that anyway thanks for sticking around to the end thanks for watching and uh you know we'll see you in the next one peace y'all <laughs>